Welcome to another episode of the 757 Renaissance Man Podcast. I have a guest today that needs no introduction. I'm sitting with the world famous Joe Pro. How you doing, my brother? I'm good, bro. I appreciate, I definitely appreciate that introduction right there, man. Love that. Hey, appreciate the love and respect. I go, I go places, and people be like, "Oh, you from the 757?" That's where them Joe Pro videos come from, huh? All right. <laughs> So how you been, yeah, man? I'm good, man. I'm hanging in there, man. Just finally, um, you know, just uh, it's, it's of course it's been kind of like hard for everybody going through the coronavirus thing and all the shutdowns of the clubs and all that. But uh, hey, I'm hanging in there. I'm here. I'm healthy. You know, I'm good. So let's tell the people how long have you been DJing? Man, I've been DJing probably for over 20 years, man. Um, you know, I was doing. I had the mixtapes out in uh, in '88, mm -hmm. so that pretty much show you, you know, it's been a, at least about 20 years, 20 years plus. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah, man. So, what got you into man, it? Man. Um, I mean, I've always been into music, man. Even when I was young, you know, I was into music. So, uh, came along with pretty much. I mean, just with growing up and hearing different songs, that kind of, you know, got you moving, and you know, I was into it. So. That's how I kind of led to the DJing part because I like playing music for people. And, you know, when I was young, I used to do the little dancing thing and all that type of stuff. So it just, uh, you know, elevated from there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, little known fact, uh, you know, our mothers know each other. No, nah, I didn't know. Yeah, they both work in the education system. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Yeah, my mom was a librarian for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My mom was a teacher. Okay. Yeah, and I think they both worked for the same school system for a little while. Right. I know my mom was at Norview for a little while. Okay. Yeah, my, yeah. my mom was in Chesapeake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like yeah, coming right. up um, being in the entertainment industry with a uh, librarian mother? Was she happy with that? <laughs> I mean, she definitely didn't have a problem with it. I mean, she I guess she saw that I was kind of good at, at doing stuff with music and, you know, my mixes. Once my mixtapes became popular, you know, she kind of embraced that. And, you know, she knew that I was kind of good at mixing songs together. So she, she definitely didn't have a problem with it at all. Um, she didn't totally agree with the videos, you know, of course. But, you know, after a while, you know, she lit up on that and, you know, everything was all good. All right. So tell me the yeah. story. How did Joe Pro get his first turntables? Let me see. Um, my first turntables. I think if I can remember correctly, I got from Radio Shack. We okay. had a Radio Shack right out here. You know, I live in Norfolk, so it was right uh, out in the Norview area. And I think it was a uh, Audio Technica. Okay. Uh, turntable. Yep. That was my first one. All right. Yeah. Radio Shack yep. was the way back in the day. That was pretty much yeah. the. We didn't have Amazon. We didn't have Best Buy. So right. It was Radio Shack or oh, Circuit City. Yeah, yeah, that in Circuit City. Yep, you're that right. That was it. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. So I um was talking to Herman Hurston. Uh huh. And he snitched on you. <laughs> I know Herm said something crazy, man. He said that you started out your career as a ventriloquist. Yeah, I was a ventriloquist also, man. That goes back, um, I say probably before the DJ. Okay. Yeah. So how'd you get into that? Um, I saw Willie Tyler and Lester on TV a long okay. time ago. I don't know if you remember them. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, one of the first black, black return out mm -hmm. there. And, you know, I liked it. I started reading books about it. Um, then I went and bought a ventriloquist figure, you know, mm -hmm. or a dummy is, is some people call it. Um, in, in the ventriloquist, you know, thing, we call it a, a, a ventriloquist uh, puppet okay. rather than call it a dummy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um, I got that. I uh, got one from, I think it was like Spencer's had like the first black one. Okay. Um, so I got one from there and I started um, practicing at home 
And then from then on, I started doing like little stuff, um, you know, for my aunts and uncles at the house, um, you know, telling little jokes back and forth with that. And from then on, I kind of put together a routine and um, I did pretty well at that. So I started doing stuff at schools, um, against Arts Festival when they had uh, stuff in town, Harbor Fest. And um, yeah, that's how, that's how that launched off with the ventriloquism. So do you still have you the know? skills? Yeah, I still got the skills. I just haven't been doing that. You know, I've been kind of focused on the music thing and the club thing, but I still have, you know, my professional puppet now um, at home. You know, the, the the cheap ones that I got, I think from like Spencer's, they was like $30, you know, back then in those days. Um, but the professional ones are like probably like four to $500. So I still got uh, mine in the house and shoot, man, if ever, you know what I'm saying? I needed to get back to it. I got to do it. <laughs> What's yeah, his name? Yeah. Uh, Jerome. Okay, Jerome in the house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Used to call it Joey and Jerome. So, how did yeah. you go from being a ventriloquist to the DJ side? Was it uh, was it an easy transition or? Yeah, I mean, it it was an easy transition because I was all already used to you know kind of like being in front of crowds and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, with me being in the music. And kind of being good at what I did with that, you know, it was definitely no problem in that transition. Okay. Pretty smooth. Yeah. Okay. So what was your first major DJing gig? My first major DJing gig. Hmm. Let me think. Uh, if, if I think back correctly, probably, uh, do you remember the uh, the strip club called Tailgaters? In Norfolk? Day, off yeah, off a of Little Creek Road. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that was like a really big deal back then. So allegedly, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for me to get into that spot, man, you know that 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 was pretty big back then. Of course, I've done other stuff, you know, um, way bigger than that now. But that was that was the spot back then, and to get in there, you know, that was a good thing. Okay, so you yeah. know we're gonna have to talk about it. How did you start with the videos? People um, I, for every I want to give it up people who are not from the seven five seven and don't know, Joe Pro is our local Uncle Luke. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Yes. And yep. at yep. that time he had some very um artistic videos <laughs> that were very high. Right. They were very, very right. high. And probably and we're gonna talk about how how many you sold too. But how okay. did the, the beginnings of that start out? Were you looking for something to accentuate the mixtapes? How did, did it just fall in your lap? How did all that start? Um, that's actually how it started, man. Um, the mixtapes um, started doing really good in the stores. So I just had an idea of putting a mixtape video together. And being that I was already DJing in the strip clubs at that time, I was like, I want to do mine different from everybody else. The other cats were doing uh, like the mixed video things where they just had different videos from different artists. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, let me put it together my own way. Let me take the soundtrack from the actual mixtape that I'm making. Let me add in some dancers. Um, at that time, everybody was going to Daytona. They were mm-hmm. going to Myrtle Beach. The Black said, Bike let Week. Let me mix in some of that. Yeah, the bike. Let me mix in the Bike Week, the Daytona uh, Beach Fest, and um, the Exotic Dancers. And then I said, let me add a little X-rated stuff to that mm-hmm. and put it all in one. So that's where the uh, the mixtape video thing came from. Like this one out there. That's yeah. So, so that's um, how oh, yeah. How many have you sold? Um, as far as DVDs, yeah. uh, videos, I, I definitely say a good amount, man. I, I don't really want to put a, a a number on that. You know what I mean? But uh, definitely done pretty well, man. I I, I can't complain. Would you say four figures, five figures, as far as a oh, unit yeah, sold? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, definitely over the years. Yeah, way more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So did you do your own pressing, or did you send out for that? Actually, man, I partnered with a friend of mine, Tape Man Inc. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, he was like my um, my man as far as who to go to to pretty much uh, promote my stuff and get it out there. So that's mm-hmm. pretty much who I went to. And I'm um, trying to get my lighting right here for you scrambling. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, Tape Man Inc., man, he pretty much uh, went to him for production. 
he directed me who to go through and we became partners um and actually the making of the videos so well because that's, that's one about. thing that i i always applauded you was it, uh-huh. it was the total package like right. you know back in the day i was into graphic design and i was doing mixtape covers and and i would always look to your product for inspiration because it, right. it always looked professional it looked like something you're going to purchase from a bigger label Right. Yeah, man. We put a lot of work into them covers, man. I mean, the photo shoots and stuff that we did uh, with myself and the dancers. And even on the inside, if you notice when you flip the DVD, we had an insert, mm-hmm. kind of like a full color insert on the inside with a, like another picture. And we had the actual full color labels on the actual DVD itself. So, yeah, we definitely put a lot of work into those, man. So did Hell yeah. Joe Pro ever get bootlegged? Hell yeah. I mean, I, I went in stores and seen my own bootlegs and had a talk with the, you know, the person that owned the store and everything. So, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I actually, I remember, I think I was down at Daytona Beach. Okay. And some guys were playing my stuff. And yeah, it was like, yo, you know, we've been copying your stuff for a while. And he pulled a DVD out and, and the joint just had Joe Pro on it. It didn't have no case, no, you know what I'm saying? You know, like I said, we put time into having a full color right, print right. on the actual DVD itself. It joint just had Joe Pro written on it. So, you know, are ain't you st- no telling how many bootleg copies were sold. Uh, are you still making videos? <laughs> At this point, I'm trying to figure out how to set up everything for the downloading and streaming. So I got okay. people working on that right now to get that popping. A lot of people have been asking, damn, man, how come you ain't put out a DVD in a minute? That's that's the thing. I'm, I want to go, I, I put it this way, I want to go the right way. I, to the next level. A lot of people aren't really, right. A lot of people aren't really going to the video stores anymore. So, you know, I'm trying to keep up with the times, with the, you know what I'm saying? With the mm-hmm. digital way of doing it. So that, that's, that's been the hold up for everybody that's been asking. So have, yeah. have you ever had trouble or issues with the record labels over copyrights? Um, if you remember back in 2003, um, when I don't know what well, I don't know if you remember, but I think it was in the paper and everything. My my house got raided, okay. and uh, I actually got arrested. Um, for that, and they have a um a copyright thing from back in the days that they actually used against me. It was called um I'm trying to think of the exact name to tell you um proper proper uh let me see proper name of manufacturer. Mm-hmm. that they used uh, when people were, I guess, back in the day where people were might have been bootlegging eight tracks or cassette mm-hmm. tapes or stuff like that. And they basically used, they started using it against mixtape artists mm-hmm. to, to actually... Um, yeah, because that, that's DJs, the same right? time. They, it was like a na- na- national crackdown on mixtapes. Right, mm-hmm. right. And they were raiding stores and stuff like that, man. But they actually uh, raided my crib and everything, dog. Yeah, right. it, it it was crazy. I mean, I ended up getting getting fines and probation, but it definitely that probably held me up from from um, making mixed CDs for probably almost a year. Mm-hmm. And then I finally, you know, figured out you know a way to actually still keep it still keep it moving and you know stay out of the way of the copyright thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so are yeah. you currently playing, and how has the pandemic affected? you as far as your dj i mean it's affected everything man as far as the club you know for a while the clubs were shut down completely Mm -hmm. um then they opened back up but you know with limited hours um you know limited time they can serve liquor so say you know at one point i think it was the liquor uh liquor stopped at 10 Mm -hmm. i think about two weeks ago they just extended it till 12 12, right right yeah but it, it still affected um still affected the clubs a lot you know a lot of people don't come out early. When they do come out early, you know, they might not stay as long because the liquor stopped mm-hmm. at 10 or 12. So it's, it's just been kind of weird, man, to be honest. And I had a couple of clubs I worked for was like, you know, um, basically we're not making the amount of money we were making at first. So we're going to either had to cut your pay or, you know, cut your days. So I've been going through that, man. So it, it's, it's definitely been complicated, man. It ain't been all good. But yeah. hey, I just been grinding through it. You know what I mean? So when you're not Joe Pro, what are you doing? When I'm not <laughs> Joe Pro, man, I'm, I'm just at the crib, chilling, looking at TV, you know, 
Um, you know, I like to hang out every now and then, go out, and um, you know, you ain't been able to go to the movies because you know the movie yeah. theater has been closed. Yeah. So yeah, man, everything has been pretty weird, man. I just kind of been on the low, chilling, trying to keep it all together. Yeah, with man. all that's going on. My yeah. daughter just went to the movies. Um, she had a birthday party. And uh -huh. what the parents did was they rented out the whole movie theater. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, I heard you can do that now. Yeah, yeah that's cool. And that's crazy because it was just like six little girls in the whole movie theater. Damn, okay. So I know they turned up there. I know, time. right? I would have been running yeah. all up and down the aisles. <laughs> <laughs> Had right? my feet all up in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, so my question is, because you've always been a car connoisseur, what are you driving now? I just got a Cadillac uh, SRX, man. I had mm -hmm. this um, since 2016. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it's like a cool little joint. I got some rims on it. You know, nothing major. Okay, okay. Yeah, but it's it's nice and comfortable. Have you seen Ride that? Good. Have you seen that new one they had? The um, the black ring, I think it's called. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. It's got like 400 horsepower. Oh man, I know that's crazy. Yeah, and it, it got a stick version. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm about ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look that up, man. When I'm about ready. To check it out. Right, sell one of my kids and get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, man, I see time is going. It's getting dark on you. I'm not gonna hold you up long. I just wanted to have a brief conversation with you. I appreciate your time. Can you tell all the people no how they can catch you on social media and and um. Any other ways to get in touch with you? Yeah, you can catch me on Facebook um, at uh, Joe Pritchard on Facebook. Also, I actually got two pages on uh, Facebook. The other is Joseph Pritchard. And um, you can catch me on Instagram at DJ Joe Pro. And to um, purchase any of my products, CDs or DVDs, uh, you can reach me at DJJoePro.com. I appreciate it, bro. I'm trying to go no back problem. and have conversations with all my old partners. Um, I would like Not to. I like to have a DJ roundtable, and if I do that, you're more than welcome to come. Yeah, I definitely like to be part of that, man. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. this is Sean. This has been my conversation with the one and only DJ Joe Pro. I appreciate you having me, bro. Anytime, man. All right, thanks a lot.